So when G is not just functions, the most important thing is to know the domain, uh, to know the range, and then we're able to speak it. Of course, when you're sketching, you want to you want to be careful that you understand what uh, the intercepts are and the behavior of the graph. So go straight into examples. H. The following function and steps the domain and the range. The first one, f of x is equal to the absolute value of x minus 2. So this function is called a modulus function. As you can see that there are modulus is there. So uh, we want to sketch the function. So to sketch the function, we will work with it. After I do that, the second thing is I get the inside. Of the modulus and the effect is zero. So what do I get as the value of x? x is equal to two. That two is the x coordinate of the starting point. I get the inside of the modulus, I effect to zero and get the value of x. That value of x is the x coordinate of the starting point. Then I pick this same value. Substitute it in the function. So what is f of 2? For this case, we have 2 minus 2, uh, which is 0. So I have 2 comma 0 as the starting point. 2 comma 0 as the starting point. What next? I find the x, I mean the y-intercept. The y-intercept for any function, whether in x is equal to 0. So we have 0 minus 2, uh, which is actually the limit of 2, which is plus 2. So plus 2, meaning that I have a line on the side, which is at that to the remaining piece, then we go inside. So this graph is f of x is equal to factors of x minus 2. Very easy to sketch. Now, what's the domain of f? It's going to be all the numbers because the function goes to the right at the left of 2 and they are not distributed. And the range of f, as you can see, is starting from 0 to infinity. From 0 to infinity. Like that. The range will mean what y values do you think can be obtained? What y values do you think can be obtained? Do I have any questions from here? So, um, I'm not very clear on the domain. Well, the domain is asking us to say what values of x can be used for this function to remain defined. Now we're suggesting that, oh, since when we use two, we get a value called zero. And we are saying for all these values, we'll be getting values where 
for all these x values, if you get your values that are going on, so it means that the domain, meaning what x values can you use? Any x value that lies can be used. I thought uh, you were saying all your numbers because it's like a linear. It's not because we're referring to the y values that are going to be getting. Not necessarily. It's a linear consistent the denominator then of this one. But now I'm saying, well, it's, it's a modulus function. So any value of x that I get there is still defined. And now we, want, we, we don't want to talk about it from the general case. We want to talk about it from the sketch that we're able to see. You can see that any value of x that you ask me to give you the value of y. For example, if I have 100 somewhere here, I have a value 100 minus 2, 98. Give me negative 120. 120, I mean, I have 120 minus 2, that's negative 122. The actual value of it is close to 122. So for a number x, from the set of your number, there will always be a y value. And that number sits in the domain. So, how did you find uh, the range? So, the range, you're looking at what y value is the smallest if the function is going up. So this is t for the y value. And on the x axis, y is zero. And there's nothing below here, meaning that the y values, which is the range, will start from zero going to infinity. So for the range, you're saying since um the vertex is on the um, is is showing on the positive, looking for values that are greater than uh what, what can I say? We're looking yeah, for uh, well, okay, uh, we're not looking for any negative values since the vertex is in the positive axis. Mm -mm. The range. The set of y values. That we are able to obtain after we use. So, what y values are we able to get in such a function? Looking at the graph, we can only get y values starting from zero, zero for y, going up. Because at zero, we have a point. The rest are above zero. These are the y values of the graph. That's why the graph is going up. So it's going up. So when looking at the range, you don't look at the x values. These are the x. You look at the y values. 
what y values are we able to get? Can we get a negative y value? There's no negative here because the graph is above the x-axis. It's starting from the x-axis and going up. So that is the mm -hmm. image. Maybe we do another question. So, uh, on the domain, mm -hmm. uh, what do we do with the negatives? Right, I got you. We are free to use them. Isn't it that she yeah. don't give, a, give us my positive? Like the it modulars. Should. So, when you say it should only give us, you're talking about the range. What you get from the function is the range. You can use a negative. Look at this. It was negative two. For example, it came out as positive. positive so x can be negative, but y cannot. Let me give you another example. f of x is equal to 2 minus 3x plus 4. You want to sketch? The first thing you do is you get the inside of the modulus. 3x plus 4. Sir. And you get the Hello. Yeah, I'm kind of asking for the previous slide. I just want to screenshot there. Yeah. Okay, okay, thank you, Saista. So you get 3x minus uh, plus 4 and you get to 0. And then we'll have x is equal to negative 4 over 3. This x, this is the x coordinate. Of the starting point. Okay, the x coordinate of the starting point. Then you get that value negative four over three and substitute in the function. We have two minus three, negative four over three plus four, giving us two minus, these will cancel. So we have negative four plus four, uh, which is two minus zero, so we get a two. This is the y coordinate. Of the starting point. So, what is our starting point then? It's going to be negative four over three comma two. Now let's find the y intercept. The y intercept is f of 0, which is 2 minus 3 by 0 plus 4, which is going to be 2 minus 0 plus 4, which is 4. So we get 2 minus 4, which is negative 2. Okay. What about the x intercept? X intercept is f of x is equal to zero. Meaning you equate the function to 
minus 3x plus 4 equal to 0. So we get negative 3x plus 4 equal to negative 2. Divide by negative 1, divide by negative 1. So we have 3x plus 4 equal to positive 2. Okay. This means that um, we need the value of x so that when this is defined, uh, we are getting a 2. So I have two options to make here. So I have 3x plus 4 itself equal to 2. That is 3x is equal to 2 minus 4. So I have 3x is equal to negative 2, meaning x is negative 2 over 3. The other option I have is to say 3x minus 3 plus 4 negative is equal to 2. That is 3x plus 4 is equal to negative 2. And say 3x is negative 2 minus 4. So that 3x is equal to negative 6. So x is equal to negative 2. Now, why have I said so? Because I understand that the modulus is defined as plus or minus 3x plus 4 in this case equal to 2. So when I have an equation, I simply, to get rid of the modulus, I simply put a plus or minus. And then start putting the plus equal to that, and that's why I come back and put the minus equal to that. So those are the x intercepts. So now, I yeah. can put up the script, can I? Yes, do you mind explaining this part where you said plus or minus, well, how you're getting negative 2. So the absolute value, the absolute value, the absolute value uh, is also defined as the square root of 3x plus square root of plus, meaning you have a plus or minus because it's spelled as a plus or minus. But you understand that the square root of the square is cancelled. So you just need a plus or minus 3x plus 4 are equal to 2. Or we understand that the absolute value of x is defined as x if x is positive. And as negative x, if x is negative. So we have those two. I want to explain it in the simple way that if you are dealing with an equation, can you please remember that huh. the easiest way is just to put a plus or minus and then forget about the absolute. Hello. Yes, uh, 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 when we, we equated the, you know, the whole function equal to zero, and we, get, uh, we got the value of x equal to negative four over three. Yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, we equated the whole function, we equated the okay. inside of the modulus. Okay. okay. There we, are looking for the, there we are looking for the starting point. Okay, okay. okay. It was negative 4 over 3. That would take 15. That's what it is. And so, we can have our sketch. Our sketch. Is like this. Because this one is negative 2. This one 
is negative 3 over 2. And this one is also negative 2. We found others. We found the first one here, the second one here, and there are two here and there. So you need one to the starting point. Two y intercept. Three x intercept. Four. Because once the points are well assembled, then you ah, so we don't need the domain or the range. So now we need to find the domain. So how do you find the domain? The domain again is all your numbers. Because anything you take in the after it is fine. Now the range, because it's facing down, it will be from negative infinity up to where? Up to this point. Up to the starting point. And then you pick the y value. So up to two. So when finding the range, you just take if it's facing up. If it's facing up, you start, you get the y value of the starting point up to infinity. If it's facing down, you get the y value of the starting remain from negative point up to the y value of the starting point. So that's so how please you. repeat that. So to get the range, if it's facing up, you pick from the starting point to get the y value to infinity. If it's facing down, from negative infinity to the starting point, you get the y value. Okay, another one. F of x is equal to the average of x minus one. Ah, uh, sorry, sir. Hello. Um, is it okay if you can just uh, put that slide back? I was copying something. Let me just take a screenshot. All right, thank you. So we have x minus one plus x plus three. But we want to see if we can also sketch a sum of two modules. We sketched one, I want to pair two. Now we talked about the issue of redefining it. Remember, when we had the equation to solve, uh, was it 3x minus 7, this equation, that was 3x plus 4. How did we solve it? We said 3x plus 4 equal to 2. We solved it as plus or minus uh, 3x plus 4 equal to 2. But I said, well, it's because this guy, that should be defined as 
3 x plus 4 or minus 3 x plus 4. There are conditions following that. Now we want to see how this is used. How do we state this completely? So let's see. In here, we pick x minus 1. So we pick the upside of x minus 1 and we define it as well, x minus 1 positive on a condition that x minus 1 is greater or equal to 0. We also pick the minus of x minus 1 on a condition that x minus 1 is less than 0. Well, that simply means x minus 1 is actually equal to x minus 1 if x is greater or equal to 1. Just so they have taken this one the other side. Uh, or if I expand here, I'll have a minus x plus 1 if x is less than 1. Now just so we will take this other side. So we have that. So we are temporarily done with the modulus of x minus 1. Let's get the modulus of x plus 3. So again, this guy can be defined as uh, x plus 3 if x plus 3 is greater or equal to 0. Or minus x plus 3 uh, if x plus 3 is less than 0. Now, what does that mean? That means that x plus 3 can actually be defined as x plus 3 if x is greater or equal to negative 3. And also minus x minus 3 if x is less than 3. So we have two definitions. We have this piece and this piece. Now remember that f, f of x, is actually the sum of the first plus the second. Now, these have been defined uh, different. We now have four pieces instead of two. Okay, so what do we do? So we say, okay, uh, what if we use these conditions, these ones here? Because they are the ones that are demarcating the four things that we have. So we have a negative three, okay? We also have a positive one. Now, one nice thing is, while well, we have x plus three, absolute, then we have absolute of x minus one. Okay? So now, let's see what we're getting if we break down in pieces these days. Let's do this. And then since we understand that f is a sum, then we put f here. After we have known the pieces, then we put f. Okay, so we know that here we are talking about x being less um, than negative three. Here we are talking about negative three being less or equal to x which is less than one. Here we're talking about x being greater or equal to one. So notice that when I say x greater or equal to, when I say greater, I also put the equal to, because even in the definition here, we are putting greater or equal to, uh, greater or equal to. And the less was just moving on its own without the equal to one. Simply because uh, when x is zero, for example, we don't say plus or minus, we just say zero. Okay, so when x is my is less than negative three, what is the definition of x plus three? X plus three, when x is less than minus three, is defined as negative x minus three. So we put negative x minus three. So that's how it's defined. Okay, but when x is greater or equal to negative three. This guy is defined as x plus three. So it is x plus three. Now, one interesting part is that 
if x is greater or equal to negative 3, uh, then you are told this x is greater or equal to 1. You are sure that even here, it is still greater or equal to negative 3. Because 1 is bigger than negative 3. Then we got x minus 1. Okay? When x is greater than or equal to 1, it is defined as x minus 1. But when x is less than 1, it is defined as minus x plus 1. And so when x is less than minus 3, uh, it means that x is still less than 1. So it is remaining that it x. Now to get f, you add the two pieces. The first one plus the second one. So we'll be adding in each interval. So we we'll have minus 2x minus 2. And then we we'll have 4 here. And we have 2x plus 2 here. So let's bring the addition. So it means that we can now sketch our function. Because our function has been redefined, does not become a piecewise function of three pieces. The first piece is negative two x minus two on a condition that x is less than negative three. The second one is four. Uh, obviously, if negative three is less than to x, which is less than one. And then we have two x plus two. Uh, if x is greater or equal to one. So then we can put this space. So we put minus three here. And equal to one. So when x is less than minus three, we want to sketch this negative two x minus two. So if you place negative three here, our f of negative three are giving us negative two negative three uh, minus two uh, minus two, which is six minus two, which is four. So we're getting a four. And we open, and then since it's negative gradient, we bring a line down. Negative gradient, I mean the coefficient of x is negative. So it's going to come down. Then it remains for throughout up to one. For throughout up to one. Throughout up to one. Of course, because of this course, guy because is less than And then, and then we have less than one, we have less than one. which means okay. Then when x is one, uh, you substitute in the third piece. So you have two by one uh, plus two, which is four. So you come and plug here. And then because the gradient is now positive, the coefficient of x, this is going on. So you have the complete scale in that now. Sir, Hello. Uh, here why you've said negative three comma four. Now, if you really want to know if it was going up or down, is it okay if you just say you pick a number which is less than negative three? Then when you when you put it in the equation, it's going to indicate that it's going up or down. Sorry. It's okay, yes. Okay, thank you. So you have your own way trying to understand these three examples. I want to give you this one today. So use oh, your sorry. to go to this. Um, I must, yeah, um, the two equations that we picked in the first one. Why did you pick those ones? What do you mean in the first one? Um, the two inequalities. Uh, when we are making the final equations, eh? okay. we picked x 
plus 3 and x <laughs> minus 1. On the last, on in the table. Yes. Here. Yes. So look, when x is greater or equal to 1, this is x minus 1 when x is greater or equal to 1. So you pick its definition in that meter. This one, when x is greater or equal to 1, you know that when x is bigger than 1, then always that x is bigger than negative 3. So you pick x plus 3. Then you, you get the sum to have. The meeting will be cutting anytime soon, and when it cuts, it will be a good night. I'll give you time to go through the three examples. So, can you explain again on how so, you're knowing if it's going, so, how do you know it's going up or down? There isn't a gradient, the coefficient of x. If it's negative, it's going up. Uh, it's going down. If it's positive, it's going up. 